Another edition of NFL Primetime. We collectively as a group are glad you collectively as a group are here with us. Trey Wingo, Trent Dilfer, Merrill Hodge. Guys, we had some interesting things happen uh, week <laughs> 15 think? of the NFL, and we will get to all of that. But first, we've got to get everybody ready for what could be a defining moment of the Philadelphia Eagles season on Monday night, taking on the Cleveland Browns, who, by the way, are 2-0 and on Monday night this season. The last time we saw the Eagles in a Monday night game, it was very early in the season, week two, when they had that unbelievable back-and-forth game with the Dallas Cowboys that they lost 41-37. to They need a win tonight to realistically stay in the playoff picture in the NFC. Time for a Teams at 20 update on the game. And for that, we say hello to Susie Culver. Hello, Susie. Hello, Trey. And to your point, it's been suggested that because this game is sandwiched in between Giants and then upcoming Redskins and Cowboys, that somehow the Eagles would take the 4-9 and nine Browns lightly. Not a chance. Andy Reid talked to the team this week about how they've won three of the four games on the road, two games on Monday night, and you cannot overlook the big guy in the middle, nose tackle Sean Rogers. Andy said when he gets it cranked up, he is unstoppable. So, Trey, Marty Morningwig, the offensive coordinator, coordinator said I didn't need to tell my team that the Browns are dangerous but I did it anyway better safe than sorry no question about that all right let, let's break down this game specifically what the Eagles have to do to keep playoff hopes alive Merrill I don't think it's news to say you've been <laughs> historically somewhat of an outspoken critic of the way but, and what have I asked for? In all fairness, you've what always asked, asked for? for balance I've been brutalized for asking and, it, and, right right and what have they given right. you re at least recently they well the fan has given me major grief no, 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 <laughs> I know what you're asking what is the but team here's what the you. team has given me they have given me what I have begged I have pleaded for for years and what have they got because of it they've actually got two wins and they've got back into the playoff race and the reason that I've asked for it so much is not just to have balance or get Westbrook the ball it's the easiest way it's when your quarterback is struggling and we have seen this in the last couple weeks against the Giants Donovan McNabb not having his best day folks throwing in the dirt all over the place now you go back the Eagles in the past they just keep throwing it Instead of five dirt balls, there'd be 10 to 12 dirt balls, and you don't win this game. Well, when you see your quarterback struggling, take some pressure off him. And you got the best player in the backfield, number 36, give him the ball. It's easy. And these big guys up front, they like to tee off on defensive guys. They get tired of letting them tee off on them. And they did it beautifully. And Donovan McNabb being smart with the ball, using his legs and then making key throws when he had to, but all the pressure wasn't on him. And third and five, and you run it, it's just historic. We haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> Only thing that's wrong, they should have been doing it week one. Shoot, they should have been done it, doing it years ago. In fact, maybe three or four, you win a Super Bowl. But now that we finally see it, just hopefully it's not too late, Trey. Well, so I've always been saying this for years. Ooh, that's all I've been asking for. Today. That's all I've been asking for. <laughs> He's going to take a moment, and we'll return right, I'm him done. to the show. He's, I'm done. In a little bit. <laughs> Whew. Okay, Trent, meanwhile, the offense may have been up and down, as Merrill alluded to, but the defense under coordinator Jim Johnson has always been what it is now, a top five unit in the NFL, and they are going to throw all kinds of pressure at Ken Dorsey. Yes, they are. I don't know how to follow that, but I'll tell you what, the <laughs> reason they advance, can stay in balance on offense is because on defense, they stay off, they get off the football field. How do they do that? They make your quarterback uncomfortable. Jim Johnson understands this is a quarterback-driven league, so what does he do? He drives the quarterback quarterback 
crazy. He absolutely makes him uncomfortable physically and most importantly, mentally. Look at this. So this is a strong side blitz all the way. You got guys in the line of scrimmage. You got a safety backing up the slot. Eli Manning takes his protection over there. Uh-oh, not so fast at the snap of the ball. They come from the other side. Eli Manning now has to have a backup plan. I got to throw my side adjust. I got to take the short little throw, but it's third and eight. So what's the result? Now I got a punt. Well, they're going to give him a different look now. Now they're going to walk guys up. It's going to look like blitz again. I got six guys up here. I got the defenders coming in. They're coming after me. My instinct says throw the ball quick, right? The ball's going to be snapped. Eli's going to throw it quick. This time they only rush three. They drop eight. Somebody right into the throwing lane. Incomplete. Another punt. And they don't only do it with blitz. They also do it with coverage. Watch this. The ball's snapped in the shotgun. While it's being snapped, Eli's eyes are down. The safety that you can't even see starting cover two comes down into what we call one lurk defense, one thief right in the throwing lane where Eli wants to go with the ball. His pre-snap picture was to throw the crossing route versus two man. The defense changes. Jim Johnson, this Eagles defense, always causing chaos for the quarterback, getting off the field, allowing them to run the ball more and find some balance. It's the same thing, baby. I'll tell you what, this defense is playing a Cleveland offense that you might just recognize. The Browns have gone three straight games without a touchdown. They've never gone four straight. Why are you the last team to do this? it, the 2000 Baltimore Ravens, who went five straight games without a touchdown. You only started one of those games. Thank you. Uh, oh, by the way, you did win a Super Bowl that year. Appreciate it. That's not happening for Cleveland. <laughs> when we continue on NFL primetime, well, you know what? It's all about the drama and the other stuff when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, and the other stuff prevailed Sunday night against the Giants. Uh, this is the best way to sum up the Raven Steelers game hitting. Lots of hitting. It's only 22 inches tall but it stands the test of time. It weighs in at just seven pounds, but it carries the weight of glory. It shines with a piercing glare and burns like a furious fire. It's what dreamers dream of and what champions embrace. The Vince Lombardi Trophy. Who will hold it next? The NFL Playoffs on NASN. I'm Demetrius Bird. Welcome tomorrow. You dig? For the end zone, Bird! And I got up and started doing like this, let you know you can't see me. LSU has won it on a miracle. You know, I looked back up and there was one second I was like, God, man, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> Being a good dancer, it, it, it helps with football. It is caught! Touchdown! Bird! There you go! Moving your body, you can get inside your route good, you can make you can make defenders miss. Caught by Bird! Touchdown! Well, yeah, you know, I move a little bit. You just rock side to side like this, and, and you just... Michael Jackson. Yeah! When I was a little kid, you know, I used to watch Michael Jackson all the time. You know, this this what Michael would do, some little things like this, wear the gloves with the glasses, make sure you're all right. I'm in here. First off, I'm going to stick my hands out like this, and you yell, oh, yeah. And then you just <clears throat> kick back with it, and you start, ooh. Y'all got me feeling it around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my little Michael Jackson for y'all. NHL Winter Classic from Wrigley Field, New Year's Day, only on NASN. Hey! Time, Trey Wingo, Trent Dilfer, Merrill Hodge. Okay, so 
Sunday night, here's what we had. Uh, the team in crisis mode two weeks ago, the Giants, with a diva wide receiver, Plexico Burr, shooting himself in the leg, possible going to jail, taking on uh, the team with a diva wide receiver in crisis mode this previous week. Terrell Owens shooting off his mouth, talking about drawing up secret plays and all this kind of stuff. Makes you wonder how these two teams prepared for a football game. But it was... An unbelievable display at Texas Stadium. T.O. booed by the home folks as he came out for pregame warm-ups. There's Jason Witten, part of the whole the conspiracy triangle group. conspiratorial <laughs> thing. All right, first Cowboy possession, third and ten, chance to make a statement. Romo to T.O. No. That's why he was booed. Right off his hands. He was also booed after this play. All right. So now, how would these working parts all work together? Fourth quarter, Witten makes a couple of big plays. Jason Witten on the screen. Antonio Pierce, get out of my face! And almost get, oh, gets down to the one-yard line. So now, Romo would find Deion Anderson for a short touchdown two plays later. Then three minutes ago, this was the key to the game. And who does he trust? Jason Witten. You're going to go to your go-to guy in the most important downs of football games. On third and 11, he picked third and nine. He picked up 11. Okay. As for Tony Romo, the offensive line did him no favors on this game. Completely under pressure the entire game. What happened on this one? He takes a knee right to the lower back. There's a lot of things this can be, but the bottom line, he played in excruciating pain this entire football game. He stayed in the game, and on the very next play, the Cowboys rewarded him by letting three people, including Jay Alford, bring him down. A little woozy. And look at the start of the second quarter. Romo on the sidelines wincing. He appears to tell Brad Johnson, hey, get ready. He gets up, but Romo sucked it up. After a Giants punt, second and four, Merrill, this is what makes him so difficult to defend. Yeah, you know, early on, you know, he couldn't escape, and they did a good job of not letting him escape, but... Sooner or later, he did, and it was really the deciding play. Patrick Creighton on the 34-yard touchdown. Giants up, or Cowboys up, rather, 7th nothing. And then another great play by Romo that goes unnoticed here. He sacked for the safety when the left half of the Cowboys line never got off on the ball snap, but Romo was able to knock the ball away here out of the end zone. Smart football play, and you got to understand, he's dealing with so much pain, it clouds your thought. It's hard to play good football when you're in this type of pain. He still makes a great decision knocking that ball out of bounds. The Giants had four sacks which was one half of what the Cowboys had in this contest. There is DeMarcus Ware with the sack and the strip. Uh, luckily for the Giants, they recovered the ball. But you know what? It was under pressure, Merrill, all night long. The NFL is about matchups. We talk it so much on the offensive side, but it's defense as well. Ware was moving all over the field, each side, and winning those matchups. And then when he wasn't doing it, Greg Ellis on the other side they're comes using in. him better now in packages versus every down. And watch DeMarcus Ware again. See, he's going from one tied to the screen or one side of the line of scrimmage to the other. The result is the same. A sack and a forced fumble. They dropped him eight times. Ware did it three times. He now leads the league with 19 sacks. Now, Deshard Choice had to play because Marion Barber couldn't play. Second straight game, this rookie has been very impressive. Yeah, fourth quarter rushing, trusting with the football and getting the ball out of the shotgun, which I thought was good. Defensive, I mean, passing looks, let him run the football, get him some nice creases and alleys. Last, last two weeks they've been doing that. Uh, again, only by choice, which is not oh, a play on words. Nice. But, you know, Felix Jones, their home run guy, isn't there. Marion Barber can't go. And this one for 38 yards, sealed the win. Choice, nine rushes, 91 yards. The Cowboys win 20 to eight. And I don't know if you saw it there at the end of that play. He went T-C for Deshard Choice <laughs> as opposed to everything else that goes on with T. Oh, who had three catches for 38 yards. <laughs> okay, now I, I saw you flex. I, I saw a bicep pop out there. something there. All right, listen, here's a question. Something. What was most, I don't know what. What was more impressive for you guys in this game? Tony Romo playing through the pain or the defense and how they took it to Eli Manning? Your thoughts? Well, I think they're equally impressive. I don't want to say one's more important than the other because that was a great defensive performance. But what Tony Romo did last night was phenomenal because when you can play in that kind of pain, it inspires your team. And when you can play well in that kind of pain, he takes a brutal shot to the back. This replay doesn't give it justice. He gets hit right in the lower back. He's got some type of lower back contusion or broken transverse process. It is crippling the type of pain you have when your back hurts. When he's rolling out to the right, you see him get a little giddy up there. He can hardly move.
move, still has the wits about him to pump fake, get a guy open down, down the sidelines, and then all game long, he still had the courage to go get the extra yard, hang in there, do anything he could to help his team win, and I truly believe quarterbacks have a huge impact beyond their stats. They can inspire those around them, and it makes the team play harder when you see your quarterback go out there and play in heroic well, like I, that. I, I, I would agree with that. I think that wins in the locker room, and when you can win there, you can win out on the football field. When you think about drama, big mouth, all the problems that Dallas has, keep in mind, that's on the offensive side of the ball. The last five or six weeks, this defense has been unbelievable. And last night against the Giants, they just lined up and whipped the Giant defensive line. They whipped their backs. They took it to them as far as their front seven go. With their defensive line, with their outside backers, they won with their matchups. But the other thing that was very impressive, they neutralized the strength of the Giant offense and offensive line in the running game. They created penetration. They played on the other side of the ball. Eli Manning had no time when they did throw the football. They couldn't get the run action going. They disguised coverages and fooled Eli Manning. This defense is playing at a high level. Zach Thomas there, not even accounted for. Look at the penetration. You define the runner's read when you do that. It's the number one killer in the running game. Every phase of defense, this Cowboy defense has played to that level. They have played to a championship level, without question, the last five or six weeks. You go back to when the Giants beat them in the first matchup. Quite honestly, this Cowboy defense handled the Giants at that point. They just had no help on the other side of the ball and kept putting them in bad situations. But so many people, we've forgotten about this Cowboy defense. They are playing at a championship level right now. Well, you can't forget about them now. They have 24 sacks in their last four games, the most since the Saints in 2001 had 25 over that time frame. By the way, here's what it did to the Giants offense ladies and gentlemen, as we go uh, inside the numbers. The Giants ran the ball. Remember, they didn't have Brandon Jacobs. A season low 17 times Sunday night. In the first 12 games, New York was averaging 32 carries a game. And Eli Manning completed just 50% of his passes, 31 out of 62 the last two weeks. And their longest pass play to a wide receiver has been just 19 yards. Still ahead on NFL primetime, consider the Jets-Bills game a gift from upstate New York to downstate New York, <laughs> and the downstaters surely needed it. Plus, Randy Moss, even in the rain, he'd like to remind Raider fans, you never Never, ever take winning for granted. Manning, now fires, intercepted! Didn't do enough as a quarterback. Disappointing. He's back. Here's the blitz. He's hit. He's hit. And down he goes. Another sack. And we're feeling sick in this locker room. He's got to air one out down the middle. He makes the interception. Throws the right there. Intercepted. He's going to the house. It's our job to score points. We need to do that better. Got to regroup and play better next week. Every week, NASN fills all your NFL needs. Touchdown, Redskins! Sunday kicks off with the Countdown Crew, followed by a live triple header of the best action from around the league. Touchdown! What a catch! Then, Monday Night Football gets your week started right with Sunday highlights on NFL Primetime, followed by Countdown before the big game. Live NFL every Sunday and Monday, all season long on NASN. on NASN. And Rollins shoots one into deep right center. What a start for the Phillies, one to nothing, as they strike first here in game five. To the hole, and it's literally kicked by Fracal. Coming to the plate, Utley, he's safe. From what might have been a double play ball to a four nothing Philadelphia lead to two pitch is grounded to short. For Kyle. Throws low and another run. Another error. And this has been a nightmare inning for Rafael for Kyle. Garcia Parra pops it up. Ruiz says he's got it. The Phillies win the pennant. And for the first time since 1993, Philadelphia is going to the World Series. Tune in to NASN Tuesday Late Night for a special live doubleheader.
After leading the Olympic team to gold this summer, Coach K brings his Duke Blue Devils to Stanford. Yes! Wow! Then, in an NHL face-off, Anaheim look to fix their home ice problems as they host the Broadway Blue Shirts. Oh, a, a special live doubleheader, Tuesday late night on NASN. Welcome back to Primetime. I'm Michelle Tafoy in Philadelphia with this Teams at 20 update. Well, remember Super Bowl 39 when the Patriots beat the Eagles 24 to 21? Linebacker Willie McGinnis played for the Patriots in that game. And yesterday he recalled how the New England defense in preparation for the Eagles had to game plan for one player more than any other. Running back Brian Westbrook. Well, McGinnis is now with Cleveland. And in preparation for this week's game against the Eagles, he said the Browns had to game plan for one guy more than any other. That's Westbrook. The plan tonight, he said, is to be physical because Westbrook is so difficult to catch. McGinnis said we can't let him release free. We can't give him seams or gaps. Tall order. Your teams at 20 updates will continue all the way up until kickoff on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Now back to primetime. Primetime rolls on. Bills and Jets really a must-win game for Brett Favre and company after stumbling to two straight losses after those big wins at Tennessee and at New England. And, well, the Jets' running game included all sorts of interesting things, including <laughs> Brett Favre, Merrill. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a great call, great design, because even the Buffalo Bills did not think number four would ever take this football on a boot action. I don't think Brett Favre thought he would take it. The more conventional route might be Leon Washington. This is a dynamic player who makes people miss. 47 yards, boom, he's to the end zone. And he's been their most explosive player. They've gotten their biggest plays from here. If we go to our ESPN acts, I'd love to zoom behind the end zone. But here's the man blocking scheme. Tackle and guard. They're going to get to the second level. Get those stack backers right away. Why? Because Alan Fanica, the left guard, we're going to pull and trap that defensive tackle. Creating and Alley. Seam and, Alley. Alley. and now we've got to ask our runner. Just make the safety miss, which he does. Yeah, he certainly He's did. Good, real good. Okay, so they had a good uh, game running. So did Marshawn Lynch uh, and the Buffalo Bills. Set him. Uh, they had. T he wouldn't stop. How many times did you see the, the first, button, second, baby. and third guy not bring him down? Marshawn Lynch, a 35-yarder there, and we're not done. Bills down 14 to 10. Lynch one more time. Why not give him 14 more? 127 yards on the day. That would lead to a J.P. Lossman touchdown pass. All right, fourth quarter now. Bills down 24 to 20. Effort run of the year. Fred Jackson is met at the five by a convoy of jet tacklers. And you know where he ends up? In the end zone. That is correct. Effort, determination. Bills take the lead, 27-24. Then the Bills, we thought, were just going to run the clock out. Oh, no. Abram Elam gets loose. Sacks J.P. Lossman. The ball comes out. Uh, this is called a fortuitous bounce to Sean Ellis. But you know what? Sometimes you need those. And he rambles in for the touchdown. you got to have an awareness, right? You have to. The quarterback has to earn the coach's trust that he will not make the catastrophic mistake. Otherwise, he'll never get a call like that again. Well, and then they tried with about a minute 40 left to get something going. And J.P. Lossman threw it to Darrell Revis. The Jets, it wasn't pretty, but they got what they needed, a 31. 127 win. Speaking of getting what they needed and it's not pretty, Dolphins, Niners, I'm shocked that Joey Porter is drawing with people before a game. <laughs> that never, happen. never happens. <laughs> Chad Pennington early in this contest, he's been great. Pump fake, throws it out there to David Martin. That is a fantastic catch by a large human being. It really is a nice play on the ball. Nice job by Chad Pennington. Moving the safety, getting it to be a one-on-one -on -one where there's no safety help. It just goes over Mark Roman and makes the catch. The Dolphins up 7-0 early. i tell you what, Pennington used some play action here again, and no one expected Joey Hanos to make this catch. Why? Because it was his first career catch and touchdown for the rookie. Show us how the design of the play made it work. Well, I'll tell you what. Great step up here you're going to see by Chad Pennington. He gets a little inside rush. He moves. It buys time for the tight end to clear after the corner route, confusing the defense. This play only works, though, because Chad Pennington steps around the rush and makes a play. 14-3. Pennington is fired up. As for the 49ers offense, you know what? They move up and down the field. Field all day, but when they got on the Dolphins side of the ball, things just sort of fell apart. All right, there is a completion to Brian Johnson, but we've got a flag, illegal formation on Isaac Bruce. Michael Singletary says, come on, man. Next play, hail back, and it's not Joey Porter, but Nathan Jones sacking him for a loss of seven. Now it's third and 23, or third in Nebraska. Hill 
Looking for Josh Morgan? No. It was a punt after a 16-play, 53-yard drive with no points. 16 plays. Just over two minutes left in the game. 49ers got a score. Hill connects with Isaac Bruce for a first down at the 42. Now, second and two, 135 left. Great, Great play, play by Robinson to make the catch there. First down inside the Miami 25, but they couldn't get anything going on the first three. They had a kill-the-clock situation. And then on fourth down, Joey Porter right by Barry Sims. Unleashed sack. Disregard the penalty for taking off the helmet. It was a post-possession penalty. The Dolphins hang on to win 14-9. to Okay, so the Jets took care of business. The Dolphins took care of business. What about Matt Castle and the Patriots in Oakland taking on the Raiders? Again, Matt Castle starting despite the death of his father earlier in the week. And Matt Castle once again realized, when I need a play, I'm going to that guy, Wes Welker, for a first down. The little things he does makes everybody else do their job here. Now, this is the dump that's off to Kevin Falk, but Welker with the block. Yeah, that's another guy that you got to watch when you get down in the red zone. Welker is one, but Falk is the other. Well, here's Welker one more time. Six grabs, 69 yards, and a touchdown. His second consecutive 100-catch season. Hey, remember Randy Moss? You're pretty good. Yeah, he used to play for the Raiders. Uh, I think he wanted to make a statement. There's a touchdown, and the statement is M-O-S-S. -S. I'm sure the Raider fans took that well. Does that spell touchdown? Uh, it does in some languages, including the language of Randy. Uh, there he is again. Welker once again creating confusion here. He, he draws so much attention. Now you get two defenders, eyeballs on Wes Welker, opens up a seam in the back. Matt Castle, good timing. Randy Moss knows where the soft spot in the defense is. Five grabs, 67 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, speaking of former Raiders, how about Lamont Jordan? Just trying to work the clock a little bit, and I'm just going to get loose. 49 yards and goodbye. 12 carries, 97 yards. Oakland, by the way, now the first team ever to lose at least 11 games in six straight seasons. So the Patriots also take care of business. Jets currently are atop the AFC East right now because of tiebreakers, but they also travel west to Seattle. New York is 0-3 on the West Coast this season. Miami's on the road for its two remaining games, that final game at the Meadowlands, and the Patriots host Arizona and finish at Buffalo. When we continue on NFL primetime, the Titans, number one seed? Well, the Houston Texans might have something to say about that. Andre is very, very good. And remember we talked earlier about the Ravens and the Steelers? It's still all about hitting. Lots and lots of hitting. season kicks off Saturday with four games on ESPN starting at 11 a.m. with Wake Forest and Navy meeting in the inaugural Eagle Bank Bowl and finishing off at 8 Eastern with BYU in Arizona and the Pioneer Las Vegas Bowl college football Saturday on ESPN. Back to the NFL Steelers Ravens Berg wins in B-Town they clinch the AFC North if you like just 
tackling, blocking, smashing people around. You'll like this. Slobber knockers. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, ben Roethlisberger probably didn't like it so much, especially when Ray Lewis tossed him around like a rag doll. Ravens, three sacks in the game. Third quarter, Steelers down. First and ten on the one. Ben to Santonio Holmes. But who's around the ball always? Ed Reed. That is He's correct. He's a ball magnet. Ravens force three fumbles, recover two in the game. Oh, by the way, the Steelers defense, which was one across the board coming in, they weren't bad either. Flacco tries to pass. Tipped by Ike Taylor. Right to Ryan Clark. Very nice job by him to grab it. The Steelers had two picks in the game. And then the Ravens in field goal quarter in the fourth. Flacco is sacked by Lawrence Timmons. Fumble. Willis McGahee recovers it, but look where they are now. That's a punt. They couldn't get huge a field goal in that game. It was a huge play because now the Steelers get the ball with just over three and a half minutes to play inside their own 10. And this drive was a thing of beauty. Big Ben to Heinz Ward for 13 yards and a first down. Now first and 10 at the 21. If it worked once, let's do it again. Big Ben to Heinz Ward makes a guy miss. 13 yards and a First down. Okay, we've locked on to Heinz Ward. Yeah, the defense is there. Let's try and shake it up a little. That's what Mike Tomlin says. So now we go to, on the other side, Nate Washington. Defender falls down. He picks up 16 yards and a first down. All right, now I've got something going with him. I'm going to stay with him. This was Roethlisberger at his best. It is. He's 15 of 29 going into this drive. He goes 7 of 11 for 90 yards in this drive. He always comes up when they need him the most. And so that was a huge play right there. The Ravens blitz one time on this drive. And right Could here, not believe it. Samari Roll got turned around here, and that's what left Washington wide open. So now they are really got something going. they got to start using their timeouts. First and 10 on the 14, Roethlisberger to Ward. Nice That's 10 screen. yards and a first down. So now we're under a minute to play. It's third and goal at the four. Ben buying time, looking for something, trying to find somebody. He's going left. That's no good. I'm going back to the middle. Oh, there's Antonio Holmes. He's over the, is it a, is it a touchdown? What is it? Now, wait a minute. They initially said no touchdown, but they reviewed it, and they said that he had possession and the ball crossed the plane. Did they get it right? It's clear they got the right call. Clear? <laughs> All right. They called it. Mike Tomlin said, it's clear. And uh, John Harbaugh says, it it's was not so clear. It was so <laughs> not clear. The Steelers come back and win the division. The final score, 13 to 9. In their last three games, the Steelers have outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter 37 to nothing. They haven't allowed a fourth quarter touchdown since a week 10 loss at Heinz Field to the Indianapolis Colts. Guys, everybody wants to talk about finishing games at this point in the season. That's exactly what the Steelers are doing. Yeah, they really are, Merrill. I mean, I know you're impressed with them as well, but I think this is a team that's spectacular when they have to make a play. And that, that's the best thing you can say about a football team. Hey, they can play ugly for a little bit, but when the chips are on the line, we have to come up with something, we do it. They don't protect very well until they have to. They didn't pressure the Baltimore Ravens very, very well yesterday until they had to. They make plays when they have to make plays, and that's what makes them special. And I, what I thought was most impressive, when you, when you watch Ben Roethlisberger and you study him, you know, and what was surprising about that last drive is the Ravens didn't blitz him more because when he chooses to move, that's when I think he is most dangerous. When he can pick a side to escape to, that is when he can break you down. When you pressure him and force him to a side, he's not as effective. So I was shocked that the Ravens didn't blitz more than once. And although when they did, uh, the Steelers made him pay. But when you back somebody up like that and you give Ben Roethlisberger the time, He's going to do that notoriously every time yep. to you. He buys time. People say he hangs on to the ball too long. He finds a way to make plays. Okay, so they win the division with this one. They got another huge game coming up. Week 16 now. They play the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee. That game could determine home field advantage. And speaking of the Titans, playing the Texans in Houston. Now, Andre Johnson has had a phenomenal season. End of the game with 92 grabs on the year. And let's just say, if he's that good, I'm going to keep going to him. Matt Schaub looking to Andre Johnson. Around five defenders. Picks up the first down. Boy, hands. Look at that, though. Oh, gets throw. the ball. Love guys that catch with their hands. That's why it's important. And wide receiver, make big plays like that if you catch with your hands. It's better than catching them with your shoulder. Uh, and then match up going deep to Andre Johnson. Oh, hell yeah, this guy is good. He refuses to go down. Look how many yards he gets after the catch. Not only a talented guy, but highly competitive, comes up in the biggest moments of games, which we know is what makes you special. And there's the touchdown. By the way, Johnson would go over 100 receptions for the game, or for the season, rather, in the game. That's 11 grabs, game, 207 yards. You know what? I think he's capable of it, <laughs> just so you know. As for Jeff Fisher, made some sort of interesting decisions. All right. They had a field goal to cut the lead to 10 to 6. They go for an onside kick. 
great. Now let's go a Hail Mary, right? No. What? They, they need a rep on their onside kick. I, I, I guess. Uh, you know what? Then that's good coaching. Okay. Now, it's fourth quarter, they're down by a point. Rob Baronis warming up. He already kicked a 49-yarder, or 51-yarder, excuse me, in this game. But they're short there. So instead of kicking a field goal, they go for it on fourth and three. Now, there was wind in the stadium because the roof of Reliance Stadium for Hurricane Ike is still not able to close. They don't get it, but Baronis once had eight field goals in a game last year in this contest. So now the Texans are running out the clock, and maybe this is the worst part of the whole game for the Titans. On this play, you see big Albert Hainsworth, the stuffer on that defense. His leg gets rolled up and under. He was walked off the field gingerly. Texans win. Jeff Fisher, your thoughts now on Albert Hainsworth. We've just completed... Uh test on both Kyle and Albert and um, I, I, I look at this as good news we'll have them both back we're expected to have them both back for the playoffs um, I was very we were all very concerned about Albert's condition after the game he has a MCL sprain and just an MCL sprain and and that oftentimes is is 10 days to two weeks so there's there's no doubt in our mind that he'll be back all right, the good news is he'll be back for the playoffs. Fisher also saying defensive end Kyle Vandenbosch is going to need minor surgery, but he should be back for the playoffs too. The good news, they expect both of those guys back. Where is this team right now after being the last team to lose? They're stumbling heading down this final stretch. Yeah, I think the term we used was they're on simmer. Yep. You know, they're, they're almost done. Now, they're a very good football team, but they lose these two guys, and their entire defensive philosophy is predicated on these two players, Albert Hainsworth and Kyle Vandenbosch, creating pressure with, with four people, disrupting the quarterback, allowing their secondary to not cover long. We saw yesterday Houston can't expose their secondary issues. If they can't rush the passer, yeah. it's be very quick trip to the playoffs. You know, one guy doesn't make a defense, but one guy can make a, a difference in a defense. And when you look at what Albert Hainsworth does, the reason they can get pressure with force because Albert Hainsworth occupies two. That's no longer gone. There's a ripple effect now. Now you don't get the matchups on the outside, so the corners, those ends can get after your quarterback. Now when you look at an offensive play caller against the Titans, you really don't have to change how you call plays. Albert Hainsworth used to make you change how you call plays, how you design offense, make you go to the perimeter, do some things early to wear him out. You no longer have to worry about that. And another major concern in the last month, the Titans have not been able to dominate and run the football. Now, last week, the week ago, they did. Right. But up to that, two weeks before that, and last Lost week, to the Jets. They struggled in running yeah. the football. A lot of second and 11s, second and 11s turned into third and 11s. Well, the only good news for the Titans, they've already won the division. But watch out for the team that has had a stranglehold on this division the last few years. <laughs> it's Indianapolis Colts, ladies and gentlemen. They're good. Playing the Lions, going for their seventh straight win. And the quarterback carousel landed on Shelton, Connecticut's own Dan Orlovsky this week for Detroit. You know, Jason Garrett famously once started a game for the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving, and his wife told him, if you all else fails, just throw it up to Alvin Harper. That's basically what he did in this game. Just throw it up to Calvin Johnson. He'll make plays for you. It's good advice. A guy like that can make plays for you. Give him the ball as much as you can down this is the last two games. Uh, 33-yard touchdown there, and then Orlovsky, uh, where's Calvin Johnson? I'm going to you, big fella. I will jump up higher and get the ball before anybody else can get it. Another 33-yard catch. He had nine grabs for a buck ten. Load option. You haven't seen a load option in the NFL in a long time, Daryl. You gotta love this. And all, it's all coming back, baby. It's coming <laughs> ah. back. Kevin Smith to the one. Then Kevin Smith. To the zero. To the zone. And watch Rod Marinelli. They're down 21-19. We're going for two. That's right. Why not, Rod? We're you guys that. got we're to find a way on. to win on the two-point conversion. Roll right, throw left. Casey Fitzsimmons. Glory, hallelujah. It's tied at 21. Robert Mathis sees no glory in any of this. Relax. You here's got Peyton the, Manning. Here's the problem. You give it back to Peyton with 11.30 to play. I like your chances. There's the Dallas Clark, who, by the way, set a Colts franchise record with 12 grabs and a buck 42 in this game. And then later in this drive, Manning pump fake. There's no defense for. A perfect throw. And by the way, the MVP debate is over. It's number 18. Peyton Manning to Reggie Wayne right there on the, the one. Colts or the league? The league. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominique the Rhodes from one yeah, yard up. 28-21. Oh, they win 31-21. Stop talking. The Lions fall to 0-14. <laughs> Guys, listen. They're the third team to start 0-14 since the merger. While we look at this and see how tragically awful they are, you have to respect the way the Lions are competing, right? They're not laying down for playing anybody. Hard. Oh. They are playing hard. I will hard. say this. Watch them on tape every week. I mean, they may not be a great team, 
but they do not quit and nope. they do play hard. No one's ever gone 0-16 within a single season. Here's yep. what they've got their last two weeks. They've got the Saints. 6-2-1 and one at home versus the Saints. They've won the last three meetings. And then they finish up at Green Bay. Now, Packers are out of it. But you know what happens here, Trey? Yeah. If you're the Saints and Green Bay, you don't want to lose Heck to the Lions. No. You don't want to be the team that loses to them. There's a lot of motivation there for those two teams. So basically, it's a it's a battle of want to. We don't exactly. want to be the you team that goes 0-16. You don't, and we well. don't want to be the one team that loses yeah. to the Detroit Lions. We'll see what happens. When we continue, listen. Minnesota, very impressive in Arizona, but something in this game may haunt the Vikings going forward. We've got that for you. Christmas time is a good time to remember good things come in small packages. Steve Smith is small, but plays oh so very large. Seriously, how many reasons do you need to pick me for fantasy football? There's one. Another. Honestly, I could do this all day. I'd pick me. Welcome back to Primetime. I'm Susie Colburn, Philadelphia, with your Teams at 20 update. Good news for the Eagles' playoff hopes. Andy Reid's teams are great in December, 25 and 10 since 2000. Reid said he'd like to think it goes all the way back to how they practice in training camp. Cornerback Sheldon Brown agrees. He said they hit live every day, and they sure hate it then. But by the end of the season, they're one of the most physical teams. Brian Westbrook says it all starts at the top and coach is always consistent. Your teams at 20 updates will continue until kickoff on ESPN, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Right now, back to primetime. Primetime rolls on Minnesota at Arizona. Remember, no Gus Farratt, Tavares Jackson, who was benched after an 0-2 start to the season back under center. I tell you what, he played really, really well. I'm channeling what I say about Peyton Manning, and I'm applying it to Tavares Jackson. Uh, There's no defense for a, a perfect throw. That, that was a perfect throw. A perfect throw to Bernard Berrien for a 41-yard touchdown. By the way, the economy with which Tavares Jackson gets his four touchdowns, very impressive. Uh, there's another good throw. Decisive strike right in the chest, tight coverage. I love how he came out and played this game. That Sidney Rice touchdown made it 21 to nothing. And Merrill, when you're up big, you can just give the ball to Adrian Peterson and let nice. him go. Nice to sit there and share the load with that guy right there. Press the hole better than anybody in football. Pulls defenders in. See this when you press the hole? See how the defenders whoop, come in? Whoop. Helps your blockers. I see it, Merrill. And I see it. And now you get to the alley in the seam, and Vince Lombardi would love the explosiveness. He'd love 100. 165 rushing yards no matter who was doing it. Same drive, little flip underneath to Chester Taylor. 
Four touchdown passes. Vikings up 23 Three on nothing. third down for Tavares Jackson. And here is one of those. Uh, a great pump fake for Bobby Wade. Again, four of his 11 completions went for touchdowns. What made this one so good? Well, I'll tell you, you get the corner with your shoulders, but you get the safety with the ball speed. Watch this ball get up and down. He knows he's got to beat the safety. He throws on a rope, hits Bobby Wade in stride. The rest is history. That's six points. Uh, as for Kurt Warner, well, ooh, sad Kurt. Yeah, that's that's a that's the not happy Kurt. Kurt. Uh, Chad Greenway, Napoleon Harris. Where has the Cardinal running game and their physical presence gone? Excellent they only question. tried seven runs. Uh, uh, he was sacked four asking. times. Jared Allen has at least two sacks in his last three games. The Cardinals were manhandled, 35 to 14. All right, here's the good news for the Vikings. They finished with two home games, and they only need one to clinch the division title. However, they're going to have to do it without one of their 300-plus pound defensive tackles. Mm. Pat Williams now out two to six weeks, mm. guys, with a fractured shoulder so Kevin Williams has got to step up and represent for both of them Broncos Panthers head coach John Fox in Carolina trying to run the table with a perfect season at home undefeated first quarter they're down seven nothing now when all else fails remember it said Dan Orlovsky throw it up to Calvin Johnson Jake DeLome you find yourself some Steve Smith open for 24 yards and that would be a Carolina Panther First down. <laughs> what I love that player. player. I love it. They've, oh. done, they've done studies, you know. 60% of the time when you throw it to Steve Smith, <laughs> he comes down with it. It works every, every time. time. There's another one for a 27-yard pickup. He got you all the way down there. You might as well have him pay it off. That bubble screen, which they but love you know to what? run. That is a called run. They call that Z alert. They run a little motion to it and end up throwing it. It should have run handing it off. It should have been B alert for Steve Smith to get by you, especially when Moose and Muhammad occupies two defenders. Uh, that is a touchdown. Listen, we got a theme going here because Steve Smith is really, really thematic. Play fake. Where are they going, Trent? Uh, Steve Smith. And I love correct. the fact that they didn't bang their head against the wall and try to run the ball all day. They exposed Denver for where they were weak in the pass game and went after it. Yeah, uh, and that would be Steve Smith again. He's tough. Look, look how farther he got when the first time Dre Bly got his arms around him. Nine catches, a buck 65. And in this game, the pass <laughs> set up the run. And there's nothing wrong with that, Merrill. And no. Merrill, D'Angelo Williams run. can run. You cannot run with eight in the box or nine in the box can't. Whoa, wait a yes, minute. You can. Visual evidence. They do it all day long. 27 to 10, and the Panthers whoop up on the Broncos the final 30 to 10. Bucks, Falcons. John Gruden and company coming off that whooping that Carolina handed them on Monday night. Jeff Garcia out of this game with a calf injury, and the way John Abraham was playing, probably the best thing for Jeff Garcia because Abraham went off. Absolute beast. And his sacks come at the most crucial times of games, too. They just break the spirit of the offense. Brian Greasy. Now, that is an unbelievable move under the left tackle. That's once, twice, three times the Abraham here. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. I'm better than you. Well, look at all of it. You got speed. You got power. You got leverage. You got all the Average. moves. Three sacks Woo. in the game, 15 and a half for the season. Fourth quarter now, 10-7 Falcons. Michael Kanan hunting. Oh, no, he's out. not. Blocked by Brian Clark. And Sabby Piscatelli picks it up and brings it to the Falcons' 22-yard line. Well, I tell you what, this is a great play. And notice how he was rushing the punter without trying to blow through the punter. All right, so the Bucks have a big opportunity now late in this game to tie it. Matt Bryant, and it is... Just, oh, shaves the right upright, but it's in. Tied at 10. We are going to overtime. In overtime... The education, the development of oh. Matt Ryan continues. Was that a called play? No, this is going to be a shovel pass. They're going to fake, they're going to shovel to the back. The back gets held up. He has the poise and recognition to get up in there and get the first and set up this big run by Michael Turner. Well, they set up a bunch of big runs for Michael Turner. That is one after a penalty moved him back, second and 17. I'm giving it to that guy again. Carries it back into the red zone. Turner, 152 rushing yards and a touchdown. So in overtime, Jason Elam won all those games in Denver. And this is the second time this year. That one shaves the left upright, but he does it again for Mike Smith in Atlanta. They win 13-10, move into a tie for second place in the NFC South. So the Panthers have yet to clinch a playoff spot, but they can wrap up home field advantage throughout with a win Sunday over the Giants. And this time last year, the Bucs were in first place in the NFC South. Now they're on the outside looking in at the wild card. However, keep this in mind, Tampa Bay 6-0 at home and finishes up with home games against the Chargers and the Raiders.
You know, Kramer once said on Seinfeld, don't look at me, I'm hideous. That might be what Redskins fans are saying about their loss to the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. It wasn't pretty. And one simple sentence, only the Chiefs could find a way to lose this game. Break covers all your NBA needs during the week with highlights, news, and analysis. I don't see who's going to stop the Lakers <laughs> right now. With unparalleled insight from former players and coverage of all your favorite stars on the I'm court. i have to go with Dwayne Wade. Balls and Celtics still the cream of the crop. Absolutely. NBA Fast Break, all season long on NASN. I've been pushed around. It's truly never over till it's over. It looks good. Yeah! Texans go up three scores on Indy. I'm about to crack, so let's call it the comeback. They throw the ball and hook the goal. Let's call it the comeback. The Colts, I think, got it. Touchdown, Reggie Wayne. It could be a season saver. Let's call it the comeback. We kick off college football bowl season again this Saturday with the New Mexico Bowl Live. The action continues throughout the holidays and into the new year with over 20 top bowl games featuring some of the NCAA's best. Touchdown, Wisconsin! Cooper diving for the end zone. Touchdown, Miami! What a call! Six time fires in the end zone. Almost intercepted, but caught for a touchdown. Plus, in January, catch every BCS game live, including Oklahoma versus Florida in the national championship game. Bowl season on NASN. Check NASN.com for schedules and information. Watching NFL Primetime. Primetime rolls on with the Skins and the Bengals. A loss here by Washington would really flush away any playoff chances they would have. Clinton Portis, of course, had the issues with his head coach earlier in the week. Everybody had issues here. Jason Campbell to Chris Cooley. Cooley loses control of the ball, fumbles, and David Jones recovers for the Bengals. I will tell you this, speak of a team who has not quit is the Cincinnati no, Bengals. Exactly. Oh, my. Good Ryan for them, good for Martin Fitzpatrick Lewis. with the play fake. They teach this at the Ivy League school. When it works, he's from Harvard. Oh, Goes in, Bengals eventually jump out to a 17 to nothing lead. Now the Redskins cut the lead to 17 to 10, trying to trickle their way back into this thing. Hands off goes to Mike Sellers at the goal line. He's initially given the touchdown, but wait a minute. Let's not cross the streams here. Let's take a look, see what happens. He appears to hit the ground before he crosses the goal line. The call is reversed. Third down and goal for the Redskins. It's to Sellers again, and Sellers loses control of the ball, trying to stretch it out over the goal line. It over the moat. It's recovered, and Clinton Portis says, man, I'm just sitting here while that's happening. Bengals going to win it 20 to 13. Chargers Chiefs. Now, stranger things have happened in the end of a game. None come to mind in recent memory. <laughs> Philip Rivers and company, they got to win. They got to win. They're down 14 to 3, but it's the Chiefs. They'll find a way. They'll get it done. Oops. <laughs> Philip Rivers to Patrick Sertan. Uh oh. And I it's love all the of Philip flowing Rivers. the other way Philip. now. I do love the effort of Philip Rivers. Oh, uh, the interception would put the Chiefs up 21 to 3. Chargers now down 21 to 10 late in the game. Rivers. Rivers wow, to nice Malcolm play. Floyd. Two point try was no good. Chargers within five. All right, so you got to try an onside kick. Matt, you get your hand team out there. Dwayne Bowe's your best receiver. Dwayne Bowe, you did not just get hit and cough that ball up. That did not just happen. Oh, it happened. It happened. Nate Cyphers is fired up. Okay, so it's Rivers. The offense is flowing with Rivers one more time to Vincent Jackson for the huge game. Chargers inside the 20 yard line. I'm telling you, Rivers was great late in this one. Again to Jackson for a 10 yard yarder the Chargers up 22 to 21 but here come the Chiefs Tyler Thigpen of Coastal Carolina comes out with the middle time running out all you have to do is set the ball but wait a minute the referee and Kaysan get involved there so it's a delay of game 
against the Chargers, so you get five yards. It's a reprieve. Norv saying, are we going to wash away this effort? Here comes Connor Barth, the rookie with a chance to win it from 50 yards. Oh, no, Kansas City. And the Chargers somehow keep hope alive. They win it most improbably, 22-21. Defensive Play of the Week, brought to you by Dial for Men 3D. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword dial, for your chance to win three days in Tampa. NFL.com. Fantasy season is not over. Play the playoff challenge at NFL.com slash fantasy. Well, as we all know, Sean Ellis with the return of the fumble late in the game for the New York Jets ensured the win over the Buffalo Bills. 11 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Is that the dial for men 3D defensive play of the week? You decide, ladies and gentlemen. Here are your choices. Sean Ellis is a fumble return for a touchdown. The Texans defense forces an incompletion on fourth down against the Titans. Or Joey Porter's game-sealing sack of Sean Hill on fourth down. When we continue on NFL Live, it is the moment when we release the information. Primetime players, who's got it? Stay with us. We're coming right back. become one of the many student athletes who go pro in something other than sports. throw by Romo. Romo in trouble running up the middle. Keeps, throws it in the end zone. Wide open. Cut. Touchdown. Romo rolling left. Running to the 10. Five. It's wide open. Walk the dog. Touchdown Romo. In 2007, the National Football League was home to record-breaking plays and unforgettable moments. NFL record, 109 yards on the return. Devin Hester, six returns for touchdowns. The Buccaneers have a kickoff return touchdown for the first time in franchise history. And Adrian Peterson is loose. 296 yards, the greatest rushing performance in the history of the NFL. Brett looking, drills the middle. He's got Jennings. Touchdown pass number 50. Randy Moss, touchdown reception number 23. Each set NFL records, and the Patriots are 18 and 0. Man, it's gonna be hit. Gonna be sacked. Oh, he got out of it. Now he fires downfield, and it is caught. Oh. What a play by Manning! And what a catch by Tyree! And the Giants, with the most improbable win, have won Super Bowl 42. Tis the season on NASN, and we're bringing you a live NHL viewer's choice. The top teams battle it out in a special seasonal NHL matchup. He scores! Choose from Pittsburgh, New Jersey, Toronto Islanders, 
for Buffalo, Washington. Log on to NASN.com and choose which game you want to see on Friday the 26th of December. A special live NHL viewer's choice on NASN. I'm going to start primetime performers today with the primetime performer of the weekend, Tony Romo. Why? Because he played hurt, he played heroic, he made things happen, going through a great deal of pain, and he inspired his teammates to great football. My primetime performers are the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Dick LeBeau's the defensive coordinator, and this defense all year has made play after play after play for the Steelers to be in position to represent the AFC. Number one across the board. I'm going with the Dallas defense. DeMarcus Ware, three sacks. The Cowboys had eight in total. They have 24 sacks in their last four games. Two picks, some forced fumbles. The Cowboys defense, the big winner in that game. That'll do it for this edition of NFL Primetime. Literally, we gotta go. <laughs> Merrill, Trent, Trey, see ya. <laughs>